my name is Jeremy Haskell with JobsInTheUS.com. We are here at the Omni Mount Washington Hotel in Bretton Woods, New Hampshire for the second annual Strategic HR New England Conference. And I'm joined now by Stuart Crabb, who is the Director of Learning of Facebook. And uh, brought came in uh, from San Francisco, so thank you for joining us. Nice to meet you, Jeremy. Nice Thanks to meet you. Here. Yes, it's a wonderful spot. We're certainly looking forward to your talk. Um, speaking of that, you're going to give a, a keynote address on aligning people's strategies with culture. Talk a little bit about some of the higher level takeaways from your, from your presentation. Yeah, so Jeremy, you know, I, one of the things that I think is really important to understand is that the external world is changing dramatically. You know, we're living through a period of enormous economic change and uncertainty, um, but also demographically the world is changing. And here in America, over the course of the next 20 years, we know that millennials will be coming into the workforce in huge numbers. Um, and the way they think, the way they behave, um, their expectations of, of work are really quite different um, from some of the generational characteristics of the people that came before them. And I think as HR professionals, we have to think very carefully about what that means for um, the, the policies, the procedures, the cultures, the norms, and the expectations of the working environment. Um, now, Facebook is an organization that has a very large number of millennials. Um, and so, arguably, we're at the, at the, the kind of the pointy end of that, that change process right now. We're living through that very much. And so, uh, the purpose of my, um, my talk on Monday um, is to really um, share some of the work that we've been doing over the last 10 years to build an organization that's really what we think is very, um, it really uh, addresses many of the needs and expectations of this uh, new generation. Uh, and I'll be sharing some of the specific things that we've done and some of the lessons that we've learned along the way. Sure, there are lots of specific challenges that we're going to have dealing with this new generation and really the, the, uh, the coming together of multiple generations in the workforce. Yeah. Um, what are some of the specific challenges that you found, perhaps at Facebook and other organizations, that those senior level HR executives are really facing? Are there anything that really stands out as a, as a significant kind of tipping point that they're really trying to work over to bring mm. together, uh, you know, to kind of bring that alignment down the organizational chain to those frontline managers? So I think one of the things that's really important to know about millennials is they are, have a really deep and innate curiosity. Um, they're always asking why. They want to know <laughs> the answers and, and, and try to understand the bigger picture to many of the things um, that organizations do. And I think that what we found at Facebook is that involving um, this generation very deeply in the day-to-day um, conversation about the kind of organization that we want to build, about the kind of priorities we have as a, as a company, how we want to build and address um, the needs um, of our users, um, isn't the preserve of senior leaders in the company. It happens and is expected to be a conversation that everybody participates in. And, and I think that when you crack open that level of um, communication and involvement um, on behalf of, behalf of everybody inside the, uh, the organization, um, then a lot of things you know, have to change um, in many traditional organizational models. I think um, decision making, um, sharing of information, uh, willingness to be open, um, uh, how you actually involve people in problem solving, um, all of these are big questions yes. um, that change you know, many, perhaps many of the accepted practices. Um, of traditional organizations and, and some of the traditional ways in which we've built, you know, the lines of authority, information, and communication. Sure, sure, that makes a lot of sense. And one of the things I've done a little bit of researching about your topic and what you're going to speak about, you know, the concept of the frontline managers trumping the brand. Mm -hmm. What do you mean by that? Help to kind of explain that a little bit. You know, this is a really interesting one. I mean, I think it doesn't matter how great your brand is, the company that you work in, it doesn't matter how interesting and powerful and um, how personally aligned your own values feel to the purpose and the mission of the company. If your manager sucks, it really doesn't matter, <laughs> right? I mean, the experience of the manager is a real, um, uh, it's kind of like a, 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 a really powerful point at which people's experience of the culture and their ability to be able to participate mm -hmm. in, in organizational life is experienced. And when that's bad, it's really, really bad. Um, so managers have a disproportionate level of impact, not just on the ability of the organization to get things done, but also they have a disproportionate impact on culture. Sure. So I'll be talking a little bit about some of the ways in which we think about managing at Facebook um, that actually, I think, takes a completely different approach to um, how um, we think um, individuals play their part in, um, in the performance of the organization. Great. Well, thank you very much for your time now. Absolutely. I'm looking forward to your talk and learning about uh, how things operate at Facebook. My pleasure. Looking forward to it. Thanks, Jeremy.